Have you ever had the feeling of pure sensory enjoyment? When multiple senses such as touch, hearing, and sight have entered another level of stimulation. We all have in some way experienced this level of sensory stimulation, most probably through the use of some form of narcotics, but I won't tell if you won't tell. But a video game certainly wasn't one I was expecting to get these feelings from. This is the power Child of Eden has over those who play it. A sensory stimulation unparalleled in gaming. This is the power of synesthesia. Child of Eden is an on-rail shooter game developed by Q Entertainment and published by Ubisoft. The game was released in June 2011 to the Xbox 360 as part of their Kinect lineup and later in September of that year to the PS3, sporting additional cinematics and was rebuilt for the PlayStation Move. Child of Eden was the brainchild of Tetsuya Mizuguchi, mostly known for developing Res for the Dreamcast and Space Channel 5 for the PS2. Child of Eden itself from conception was viewed as a spiritual successor to Res, which fell under a genre best described by reviewer Thomas L. McDonald as a game that carves out its own niche, the art house abstract musical rail shooter. Now, if that description comes off as a little pretentious in the this game is true art of the highest caliber sense, well, it kind of is. This style of game is one that you have to fully embrace to get the desired effect from, and any hangups could lead to an understandable rejection of the medium. Just look at the recent backlash against the seemingly unending wave of what has been coined walking simulators to understand what I mean. I played Child of Eden on a whim one Saturday night as I looked into the ever-growing threat that is my unfinished games library. I recalled seeing videos of it on its release, generally dismissing the game as a vapid rail shooter without much content, though it fared a bit better in more critical spaces than your average Dark Side Phil YouTuber. While I agree with the latter criticism that the game is lacking in much content, it does contain a surprising amount of depth for a game that lasts only about three hours, let alone in the genre space it lives in. I wasn't prepared for the experience Child of Eden would provide for me, a sensory stimulation I had never felt before when playing video games. My vision, my hearing, my sense of touch had all been in a state of hyper-stimulation by the time the credits rolled, and by that point, the only thing I could really say in the end, with a tear in my eye, was, this is art, as cheesy as that sounds. Now, you might be saying to yourself, of course you had those specific senses stimulated. Touching, hearing, and sight are all involved in the gaming process, and well, yeah, of course. That is the desired effect of every game. Yet, the journey I had going through Child of Eden transcended the feeling I had playing, say, Call of Duty or Final Fantasy or Leisure Suit Larry. But what could cause this? The vibrations of the controller, while stimulating my touch, were somehow stimulating my ears at the same time. The bright, vibrant colors and surreal imagery played with my eyes, yet at the same time I felt like I could touch them. The music itself somehow danced on the screen before me, my vision was being played with by the music. I swear I did not take any particular enhancers before playing this game. In fact, I'd go so far as to say they couldn't replicate the feelings I had during this. Then again, I don't know if I'm getting the right stuff from the guy behind the 7-Eleven. Looking further into the idea of sensory stimulation, I stumbled upon a term I'd never heard before. Synesthesia. Outside of being a term to easily fumble over when reading a script, synesthesia is when stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathway leads to an automatic involuntary experience in a secondary sensory or cognitive pathway. Say that seven times fast. Basically, it's the closest thing to a real sixth sense. Synesthesia itself is seen as a disorder that runs in about 3-5% to of the world's population, and isn't exactly a common experience. Yet, art, as we see it, is a piece that is meant to stimulate more than one sense. So what happens when we stumble upon a piece of art that stimulates one sense, yet at the same time can stimulate another? Perhaps, through video games, this is how those unaffected by synesthesia can somehow experience it. Or at least, something close to it. As you've heard me yammer on about theories and disorders, experiences and stimulations, I'm sure you've been gathering whether or not you would even be interested in Child of Eden. The game itself is very much a rhythm shooter, as the level progresses, you shoot specific targets to get points. Straightforward enough, and yet, what you shoot adds to the music playing. See, the music in this game is far more than background noise or something to keep you in the mood for this kind of game. It serves a thematic purpose throughout. The story of Child of Eden is revealed through the game's introduction. It focuses on a girl named Lumi, the first human to be born in space, September 11th, 2019, aboard the International Space Station. You guys remember that? Yeah, that happened apparently. 
Throughout her life, Lumi dreamt of visiting Earth, conveying her feelings into song, which she sent down to the people of the planet. When she died, her body was preserved and her memories and data were recorded and archived. The story moves to humanity's advancement in space exploration and the creation of a universal wide internet system called Eden. Eden is described as a fountain from which all knowledge flows to those who have never set foot on Earth, containing all of human history and knowledge. By the 23rd century, scientists attempt to use Lumi's preserved data to create a living persona with Eden itself in an experiment called Project Lumi. As her recompiled persona emerges and awakens into Eden, she is attacked and trapped by an unknown computer virus. The goal of the player is to destroy the attacking virus to purify Eden and save Lumi from being erased. As you play through the game, the music you hear is Lumi's, the music she created while aboard the International Space Station, and it's used as a beacon for the player to find her, while putting an end to the virus attack. As you cleanse more of Eden, more of Lumi appears during gameplay, and the music ramps up leading to an explosive finale that leaves the player with a large amount of emotions bubbling up. Lumi is portrayed by Rei Yasuda from the band The Genki Rockets, whose music is featured throughout the game. I'm not a particular fan of this style of poppy music, yet couldn't help loving it here. It felt entirely appropriate to the game and its scenario. It affected me emotionally, and I'd be lying if I said their albums weren't in a lot of my Spotify playlists now. I don't want to just shrug off all the early armchair theory and babbling aside. Even though that is kind of what it all has been, as the attempt to feel synesthesia was the end goal from the developers of both the Res and Child of Eden, this game surpassed feelings I'd experienced from this form of entertainment to provide something truly unique. So unique, I felt like I had to share this underrated and barely known little gem to the world. I first played the game in March 2018, and here I am now, and I still can't stop thinking of the game and how powerful of an experience it was. That was the lasting impact of the game. Dozens of games since have passed through my hands, and while I've loved and embraced so many, none have achieved this level of experience I had. If you have the time, a couple extra bucks to spend, and a desire to experience something you've never felt before in the gaming world, I truly recommend you travel into the universal wide internet system of Eden and experience Child of Eden. Lumi is waiting for you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I know this was slightly different from what I usually do where I talk about a film and apply critical theory to it, but I wanted to discuss a video game while applying the same kind of critical thought to it. Not as in-depth as those uh, videos are, this was more applying critical ideas to a game that I don't think really many people have played at all, and I think I really wanted to highlight this kind of a game that totally different from anything I've ever experienced and might be different from anything you've experienced so if you have like I don't know I got the game for eight dollars I'm sure you can find it for cheaper now than when I found it so if you definitely really want something new and different to experience in the world of video games I cannot recommend Child of Eden enough. You will be getting other videos of course um, on a more consistent pace than before um, which include uh, videos on films, games, maybe a couple comics. I don't know, that just depends if I'm really willing to tap into that as much. But definitely, films and games are where it's going to be at. I may talk about a couple shows if I feel the need. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more freeform about what I want to talk about, because before I was so focused on I have to talk about a film and I have to apply critical theory to it, and while I'm going to be doing those every now and then, I wanted to also be discussing just the things I love in general and applying, maybe not 
um, a critical analytical theory to them, but applying critical analytical thought to them. So uh, look forward to that <laughs> in the future. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.